Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math MathCast, Lesson 20-2, Writing Probability as a Fraction. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote tonight is by Walter Badgett. It rhymes with gadget, so if you want to impress your parents, you can say, who said the quote tonight? And they'll read it, and then you can say, oh, I think it's Walter Badgett. So he said, life is a school of probability. And he was an economist in England in the mid-1800s, and he wrote about politics and the economy and um, government stuff too, So um, and literature. So I had to look him up. I didn't know anything about him, and when I read his quote, which I liked because it's about probability, I had to learn a little bit more to uh, be able to share things with you. Uh, our learning goal tonight is to use fractions to represent the probability of an event. There are some books that he wrote, Lombard Street, a description of the money market, and that uh, copy belonged to the University of California. Kind of cool. Here is our individual lesson learning goals. Use the terms impossible, unlikely, likely, and certain to describe the probability that an event will occur. And we're going to write probability as a fraction and use those fractions to decide which terms to use. Here's our vocabulary. There's his grave. It's kind of fancy looking. Um, probability means it's the number that describes the chance that an event will occur. So if I asked you, what is the probability that you're going to have homework on a school night? It would be likely, absolutely likely. What would be the probability that you are going to um, have to be in fifth grade again? Unlikely. And we could probably almost go to impossible because all of you have worked really hard this year. What is the probability that you will um, enjoy your math class? Hopefully, likely. What is the probability that I will give you homework on a Friday? Mm, I've done it a couple times. Maybe unlikely. I don't usually give you homework on a Friday. What is the probability that I am going to eat lunch? Certain. I never miss lunch. It would be certain. So all of those are just some different examples of the way we use the term probability. Sometimes we also use the term likelihood. What is the likelihood that I will eat lunch today? Certain. I will certainly eat lunch today. So there's our definitions of those words. Certain means an event will occur. There's no chance it won't occur. Impossible means an event will not occur. Under no circumstances will it happen. Likely means you have a 51% chance or greater that an event will occur. Remember with fractions that would be greater than one half. Unlikely means you have a 49% or less chance that something will occur. That would be less than one half if you were using your fractions as probability. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of those. Here's an example. This is one of the things that Gadget said. He said, the greatest pleasure in life is doing what people say you cannot do. And since he was a pretty conservative guy, you can see him standing in the middle of those groups of important men. Um, I don't think that he was saying that you should do things people tell you not to do. Like if your teacher tells you not to talk in class, that doesn't mean you should get pleasure out of talking in class. I think it means that you, if people tell you math is too hard for you, you should say, hey, I get a lot of pleasure out of doing hard things that people say I can't do. And then just enjoy your success. Here's our example. There are 11 colored pieces of paper in a bag. Two pink, three blue, five green, and one yellow. What is the probability of pulling out each color? We're not only going to write the probability of pulling out each color in fractions, we're also going to use those terms we talked about earlier to describe the probability. Let's do that now. Okay, so first of all, we have to know in order to write a fraction because a fraction is always showing how much of a whole. So we need to know how many colored slips of paper we have in all. So here's our bag. We have two pink, three blue, five green, and one yellow. So we just need to add those up. Two plus three is five, five plus five is 10, and 10 plus one is 11. So 11 will be our denominator for each color. Now, if we're talking about pink, we have two pink slips of paper in this bag. So out of 11 slips of paper, there are two 
chances of us pulling out a pink piece of paper. So the fraction that represents the pink pieces of paper is 2 elevenths. There are three blue pieces of paper. So there are three of 11 pieces of paper that are blue. So we would write 3 elevenths. There are five green pieces of paper. So we would write five chances out of 11 that we would pull out a green piece of paper. And there is one piece of yellow paper. So there's only one chance that we're gonna pull out a yellow piece of paper. Now we're assuming that we're pulling out one at a time. So um, these are the fractions that represent the probability of pulling out each color of paper. Um, one thing that you do need to know is that since probability can be written as a fraction, it is also simplified always because fractions are always simplified. So if we only had four green pieces of paper and 10 was our denominator and we were trying to find the probability of pulling out a pink slip, two tenths because there are two pink slips out of all the different colored pieces of paper, I would need to simplify this. Now remember, you can simplify by dividing by a common factor or you can also make a cake. And so I'll come down here and write two tenths inside the bottom layer of my cake and ask myself what number divides evenly into both two and 10, and it's two. Two goes into two one time, two goes into 10 five times. Next layer of my cake, what divides evenly into both one and five? One is the only number. One goes into one one time, one goes into five five times. Remember our saying, simplify, make a cake, look for the bride and groom. If this is our wedding cake, this is our bride and groom standing on top, but we can't just leave it on top of the cake. We have to come over here and write it as an equivalent simplified fraction. Let's see if you can try some now. Here are your instructions for your practice problems. You're going to write the probability of each event occurring as a fraction and whether it is likely, unlikely, certain, or impossible that it will occur. Remember, in order to be certain, it has to be the same number in the numerator as the denominator because there are no chances that it won't happen. So for it to be certain to occur, you have to have one whole, basically. If it's impossible for it to occur, you would have a zero. You don't write a fraction as zero over however many choices you have or how many parts there are in all. You just write zero. So certain would be represented by a one. Impossible would be represented by a zero. Likely would be represented by any fraction greater than one half. And unlikely would be represented by any fraction less than one half. Just for your information, if your fraction is exactly equivalent to one half, that's called equally likely. You are just as likely for it to happen as for it not to happen. Let's try some. If Reuben puts the letters of his name in a bag, what is the probability that he will pull out the letter B? So write it as a fraction and then write whether it's likely, unlikely, certain, or impossible that it will occur. Pause it and push play when you've written it down. Did you write one-sixth and unlikely? I hope so. If you count all of the letters in Reuben's name, he has six letters in his name. There is only one B. So one is your numerator. That represents the B. And the six represents all of the letters in his name. One-sixth. One sixth isn't anywhere close to one half. And if you need to check that, you can do, well, let's look and see what we can do. I wanna show you how you can compare it with one half if you're not sure about the fraction. Although any time a fraction is equivalent to one half, you know that it can be simplified to one half. One half is a unit fraction because it has one in its numerator. Now, if I end up with the fraction one sixth, and I want to know if it's greater than or less than one half, I just write one half next to it and cross multiply. Starting at the lower, at the lower denominator, six times one is six. Write it above it and circle it. And then start with your other denominator, two 
times one is two. Circle it. Now, six is definitely greater than two, or two is less than six. So one sixth is less than one half. So because we know it's less than one half, it's unlikely that it will happen. It's unlikely that we'll pull a B out of the bag that has letters of Reuben's name in it. Number two, what is the probability that Reuben will pull out the letter E? Write it as a fraction and then write whether it's likely, unlikely, certain, or impossible that it will occur. Pause it and push play when you've written it down. Remember, you can always check your answer. Look back at the previous problem if you've forgotten how. So here are the letters in Reuben's name and we were asked to find the probability of him drawing out an E. And we count how many letters we have in all. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's our denominator, how many we have in all. And then we count how many E's we have. One, two. There's one E. There's another E. Two sixths. But remember, probability as a fraction needs to be simplified. So I'll come down here and make a cake. In the bottom layer of my cake, I write my fraction and ask myself what divides evenly into two and six. And two does. Two goes into two one time. Two goes into six three times. What goes into one and three? Just one. One goes into one one time. One goes into three three times. Remember, when you've repeated those two fractions, you're done. Look for the bride and groom. So two six is equivalent to one third, and that's in simplest form. We also call it reducing it to lowest terms. Now, I'm not sure if one third is greater than or less than one half. I know it's not three over three, which would equal one, so it's definitely not certain that he'll pull out an E. He might pull out a B or an R or a U or an N. It's also not impossible that he'll pull out an E because it's not zero. He does have a chance of pulling out an E. There are E's in his name. If I asked you what is the probability of him pulling out a Q, that would be zero, so it would be impossible. Now, so we're going to compare one-third to one-half by cross-multiplying. Three times one is three, and two times one is two. Hmm, three is greater than two, so the fraction underneath the three is greater than the fraction underneath the two. One-half is greater than one-third, so since one-third is less than one-half, we know it is unlikely that Reuben's going to pull an E out of the bag. Number three, if you have green, blue, and red shirts in your closet, what is the probability that you will choose a black shirt to wear? Pause it and push play when you've written the fraction and whether it's likely, unlikely, certain, or impossible that it will occur. Pause it and push play when you're ready. When you're ready. Did you write impossible? There are zero chances, not even written as a fraction, zero chances that you're going to pull a black shirt out of your closet if all the shirts in your closet are green, blue, or red. No chance. And don't think about, well, what if my little brother left that black shirt wadded up in the corner? Ha! Uh -uh, this is math land. If I say there's only green, blue, and red shirts in the closet, that's all the colors of shirts there are in the closet. So you can say with certainty that it is impossible that you will wear a black shirt to school from that choice of shirts. It's time to practice word problems. I'll bet our word problem has something to do with buttons. If Cameron has eight yellow buttons and four blue buttons in his pocket, what is the probability that he will pull out a yellow button? Write it as a fraction and then write whether it's likely, unlikely, certain, or impossible. Pause it and push play when you've got it. Did you write two thirds? It's likely? Let's see how we did that. The first thing we need to do to write probability as a fraction is to find out how many buttons we have in all in his pocket. So we add eight plus four and we get 12. 12 is our denominator. Then we write down how many yellow buttons there are. There are eight. So there are eight chances that he will pull out a yellow button. Eight twelfths is the probability of pulling out a yellow button. But eight twelfths isn't simplified. It's both, they're both even numbers. So let's put eight twelfths in our cake. 
in the bottom layer. What divides evenly into 8 and 12? Let's go with 2. 2 goes into 8 4 times. 2 goes into 12 6 times. What divides evenly into 4 and 6? 2. 2 goes into 4 2 times. 2 goes into 6 3 times. What divides evenly into 2 and 3? Mm, just 1. 1 goes into 2 2 times. 1 goes into 3 3 times. Simplify, make a cake, look for the bride and groom on top. So 8 twelfths is equivalent to 2 thirds. 2 thirds is the probability that he will pull out a yellow button. But we want to know if it's likely or unlikely. We know it's not certain because our fraction isn't 3 thirds or 12 twelfths, which would equal 1. And we know it's not impossible because our answer isn't zero. There are yellow buttons in his pocket. So we're going to compare 2 thirds to 1 half and cross multiply. 3 times 1 is 3. Remember to always start with the denominator. And 2 times 2 is 4. 4 is greater than 3, so 2 thirds is greater than 1 half, which means it's likely that he will pull out a yellow button. It's time to challenge yourself. There's one of the books that Walter Badgett wrote on Birch Street. If Mrs. Gooding has 45 pairs of socks with polka dots on them and 24 pairs of socks with reindeer on them, what is the probability that she will pull a polka dotted pair out of her sock basket to wear on Thursday? So, write the probability as a fraction and then write whether it's likely, unlikely, certain, or impossible. Show your work in your flip journal and explain your answer. Come back tomorrow ready to check your answer. Finishing up, this is a pretty easy lesson. I think you've probably had a lot of fun with it. Write down whether, where you're, whether you're at a level one, two, or three in your journal. And write down any questions that you still have. Lovely likelihoods. You have completed lesson 20-2, writing probability as a fraction. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.